Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. A prayer for the nameless dead. Souls that once burned bright in the belief they could find a better life, now in the ground in a migrant's graveyard in northern Greece. They're cared for by Mehmet Sharif Damadolu, the Mufti of Sidiro, a minority Turkish-speaking village where he also manages the local gas station. Humans have dignity when they're alive, he says. It doesn't disappear upon death. It seems a lonely vigil, but the Mufti is not alone in his willingness to cross paths with the dead. Greek coroner Pavlos Pavlidis sifts through a catalogue of the dead, at least of their belongings. Each numbered envelope holds a potential link to those looking for the missing, a touchstone, a ring or a watch, a mobile phone covered in mud. It's very important, these personal belongings, yeah. especially uh, personal belongings uh, with metals, metals better. Uh, because they last. Yes, because yeah. it's keeping the water. Pavlidis and his small team work in the basement of a teaching hospital in Alexandropolis, close to the border with Turkey. Most of his cases involve those who die trying to cross it. 36 this year alone, 500 over the course of a 20-year career. Every year the number is bigger. This is a problem. Relations between Greece and neighboring Turkey are already steeped in long seasons of distrust. Much of its length is a closed military zone. The Evros River tends to mark the geographical border between Greece and Turkey. And last month, Greece finished the latest section of a wall or fence they've been building along the border. Greek ministers here will tell you that what's happening in Afghanistan makes it all the more imperative to have it. Locals living nearby will tell you the same. Fisherman Alexandros Adalis says Greece can't be left to deal with more migrants on its own. I feel for them, he says, but on the other hand, Greece can't sustain them all. Last year, in a dispute with the EU, the Turkish president Recep Tayyip Erdogan opened his side of the border, encouraging migrants to head to Greece. Many people found themselves trapped between Turkish police pushing them forward and Greek security forces pushing them back. They take our shoes, our pants. At the time, these Afghan men told CBC News that Greek police had stripped them of their belongings before sending them back across the river. Adelis says he and others helped form a kind of citizen's defense, a flotilla, at the request of Greek authorities. Back then, we gathered on the border in the middle of the river to be able to push back the invasion, he said, because it was clearly an invasion from the other side, from Erdogan. Human rights groups have long accused Greece of pushbacks, both along the land border as well as at sea. The government in Athens denies the allegations, but that the country has moved to toughen its migration policies is not in doubt. They are heavily oriented towards deterrence, preventing people from entering the country as much as possible. The 40-kilometer-long border wall in Evros is one manifestation of that policy. Plans to build closed migrant holding centers on Greek islands is another. You know, if nobody sees them, then nobody remembers that they're there, so we don't really have to talk about migration, because that's the other uh, angle uh, that this government very much pursues. They would like to stop talking about migration, as most of the EU, to be, to be fair. It's not something Pavlos Pavlidis will stop seeing. He's already had to ask the Red Cross for a second refrigeration unit, in addition to the one already sitting outside his office. He's not convinced the new wall will stop people from trying to get around it. The land border, it's about 200 kilometers. 200 kilometers, it's very long destination. For me, it's difficult with a fence to stop the refugees. And he'll keep trying to restore the identities of those who die along the way. 
It's my work. It's my work. It's ethical for me uh, to give the answer. It's not good answer. It's not good answer, but it's answer. There is too in the hilltop graveyard a place to visit if need be for those who mourn. Perhaps some comfort that in the end at least, there were those determined not to ignore the last journeys of the desperate on this earth and to mark their place. Margaret Evans, CBC News, Northern Greece.